The rapid on-site cytology evaluation allows rapid assessment of the adequacy of the endobronchial ultrasound tBNA and identifies disease process. Proper collection and processing of the specimens is crucial for accurate diagnosis. Slide preparation is generally not part of the teaching curriculum in interventional pulmonology training programs. The slides are prepared, reported and billed by the cytopathology team. In this video, we describe the technique frequently used in rapid processing of aspirated specimens. This picture displays what is typically needed during rapid on-site cytology evaluation. Beside the microscope, you will need glass slides, paper towels, gloves, gown and goggles. The staining solution should be in airtight containers. The glass slides are appropriately labeled on the frosted side with the patient's name and a second identifier, and subsequently marked with the number of the needle pass. The following are terms frequently used when interacting with the cytopathologist. In cytology, you are looking at a disrupted tissue fragments, whereas in histology, you are looking at an intact tissue. Touch prep is a technique used to provide a rapid on-site evaluation of a biopsy sample. It consists of touching or carefully rolling the specimen onto the slide, so that some materials stick to it. Fixative, like formalin, is a solution that prevents the specimen from degrading. Transport solutions, like Hank solution, RPMI and saline, which we will review later, help to keep the cells intact and viable. Dry aspirate, typically happens when you have fibrotic lesion. So when you have a dry aspirate, consider using a larger needle. The next generation sequencing, helps characterize the tumor based upon its molecular DNA profile, and determines if there is a targeted therapy. It can be obtained from formal and fixed tissue, or from cytology smears. In terms of slide preparation, after the specimen is obtained, the tip of the needle is held with the beveled end facing and oriented downward to expel a small drop onto the slide. A second slide is used as a shield, and held at an angle, to prevent expelled material from getting splayed. The smear is made by placing the second clean slide directly over the specimen, which is gently pressed to allow even spread. As it starts to spread, Pull gently the slides apart with a one fluid motion. So you will end up have two slides containing smear. One slide can be immediately fixed in the alcohol solution, the other is allowed to air dry at room temperature for rapid staining. The rest of the specimen can be expelled directly into a preservative solution for histologic evaluation. There are numerous liquid medias used for collecting needle aspirates. The choice of the solution depends on the type of the investigation needed. For example, aspirated material expelled directly into a sterile normal saline container provides flexibility for microbiology testing. The Hank solution has a physiologic pH and is used to maintain the cells in a viable state. The RPMI is used for flow cytometry, it also keeps the cell viable, and it is used when the clinical suspicion is that of lymphoma. Formalin is a widely available fixative solution and comes in a pre filled container. Alcohol also serves as a fixative, and can come in a very useful pre-filled four slide jars. This can be helpful when on-site staining is not an option. Slides can be smeared, fixed in alcohol, and transported to the lab for staining and processing. The diff quick staining method is one of the most commonly used worldwide. It is a quick method with a very short staining time and uses three different solutions. Alcohol, eosin, and methylin blue solution. The slides are either air-dried or wet-fixed in alcohol. The slide must be fully air-dried before going briefly into the first solution that is methanol. The slide then is removed from there, held vertically, and gently tapped on a dry paper to remove the extra liquid. Then it is moved into eosin for a few seconds. Once again, the excess liquid is removed, and the slide is dipped into methylene blue for an additional few seconds. For wet slides that were immediately placed in alcohol, they are taken to the lab to be stained with either H&E or Papanicolaou. The diff quick method stains the nucleus in blue to purple color. The cytoplasmic staining is more variable, red or pink for red blood cells, light blue for macrophages and lymphocytes. It often stains cilia pink, which is helpful for identifying bronchial cells. As mentioned earlier, besides rapid smear preparation, dedicated aspirated specimens for cell block material are also obtained. Cell blocks increase the diagnostic yield and can be archived for future diagnostic and research purposes, while allowing the original smears to be preserved. A cell block is a technique that converts a cytological aspirate into a histological specimen. Different approaches have been described. 
The histogel method is shown here, and it involves several steps. The specimen is centrifuged, and the supernatant is poured off. Liquefied histogel is added to the tube, allowing the mix to solidify and form a solid concentrated cell button. It is then wrapped in filter paper and placed in a histology cassette. The block is the end result after processing when the button has been embedded in paraffin. The specimen is then processed routinely by the histopathology lab. Immunohistochemistry stain and molecular studies are performed preferably using the cell block, but can also be done from the smears if necessary. And finally, slides review should indicate whether the specimen is adequate, which means, if there is adequate background of lymphocytes, or if the specimen is diagnostic of a disease process, that explains the lymphadenopathy or the lesion being aspirated. A sample is labeled as diagnostic, if it provides a definitive diagnostic such as malignancy. The final report, should mention the adequacy of the sample, the diagnostic category, and the use of the ancillary techniques, namely immunocytochemistry, flow cytometry and molecular studies. In summary, slides preparation technique is not part of the teaching curriculum of all interventional pulmonology fellowship programs. We think it could be incorporated during training as it might be helpful when there is no adequate support staff. This conclude our video. Thank you for your attention and please don't hesitate to leave us a comment or suggestions below. Goodbye.